So we're going to talk about spread now. And spread can be measured in three different ways. The first one is the one that you won't see very often in this class, but you've probably seen in the past, and that's range. Range you find by doing your maximum value minus your minimum value. The second thing is going to be what we call standard deviation. Now, the standard deviation is actually very long, unfortunately. I will give you the formula for it. We're going to calculate it one time in our stats class. And actually, from there on out, we're going to always use a calculator once we calculate it once by hand. So the formula for standard deviation is, I'll just tell you right away, right now, you'll, you'll see it in just a second, but it's ugly. So don't freak out when you see it. Luckily, we have technology to do most of the work for us. However, I will warn you that oftentimes when you get to college, you have to do this by hand. However, in this class, and even if you're taking the AP test, in this class and with every test that I give you, you will always do it on the calculator. But this is our formula. You don't need to write that down unless you want to, but I would say for now, kind of keep at the back of your mind that it is a horrible formula. We will learn how to do it both by hand and with technology. However, the main thing we're gonna focus on today is what we call the interquartile range. Now this is a lot friendlier than the standard deviation, and we'll be using it quite a bit. By the way, you also can abbreviate it with the IQR, as IQR. So the interquartile range is going to be found by doing your third quartile minus your first quartile. So in the previous example we did, we had uh, grams of fat, and we found that our first quartile was 15, and our third quartile was 24.5. Finding the IQR here is actually fairly easy. You're just going to subtract those two. To make it even easier, you're always allowed to use a calculator in this class, so you actually really don't have to do much thinking at all. So it shouldn't be too hard. You should get 9.5. Now the hard part comes when you're actually finding outliers. So I mentioned outliers before. An outlier is a value that's far from the other values. But we actually have a way to measure whether something is an outlier or not. So an outlier is going to be any value that is greater than your Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR, or less than Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. I actually filled the IQR in already, but this is our formula. So what we're going to do, we are going to find if there's any outliers in here. So I'm going to start with uh, my Q1, which is 15, minus 1.5 times my IQR, which is 9.5. So we end up getting 0 0.75. And we can easily see that there's nothing that has any fat grams that are less than 0 0.75. So there are no low outliers. We're going to do a similar thing to... Um, our higher outliers, we're going to take our Q3, which is 24.5. We add 1.5 times 9.5. And you're actually going to find out that your answer is 38.75. And actually, there's nothing greater than that. So there are no high outliers. So we say that there are no outliers. So even though we might have thought that the 33 and the 9 would have been outliers, actually, they're not high enough to classify them as such, so we say that there's no outliers.